dope. So man, we 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 getting almost through from beginning to you know setting it up, the fundamentals yes, all the indeed. way through the end of the story. And now I know, you know, we, we start to talk about, you know, the finish line and what that start to look like. And we're going to, you know, start to refine that process. And, and you got that laid out already for us. Yes. So um, at this point, you almost done. You know what I'm saying? Um, you've had multiple drafts. Now you have the draft that you feel like is ready to be edited. Right? How, many, how many drafts did you go through? Like five. Five drafts. For the first I, I book, think I went through like three of my first. Of my first book was five. Last one was like three, yeah. two, three. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Uh, once I became more familiar with the process, um, you know, mainly you want to get that first draft, one that's a little better, and then you know, I feel like three should be the most because at that point, you in your own way. It's time for the professional to do their job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so. Before you get into an editor, because you're going to pay the editor per word or per page, depending on who you're dealing with. I reference an editor in here um, that I recommend you use, and that's who I use for all mines. And uh, she's very forward, <laughs> very forward, yeah. very blunt, and she's very critical. And it's challenged you to be the best writer you can be. And so things you want to do. You want to take out words that don't need to be in there. You know what I'm saying? Like just too many adjectives to describe. You know what I'm saying? You want to do that. You want to make sure everything is spelled to the best of your ability because the less time your editor spend cleaning up your the things you could have cleaned up, mm. the more time they can focus on making your story better. Excuse me, because that's what an editor does. They make a, a good story a great story. You know, they don't they don't make the correction for you in regards to like what you could say, but they'll ask you a question like, uh, why why did you why did you say walk instead of use a better word to describe walk? And so now you can go and find a word to describe the way they walked. And so it's these little things like that that take your story over the edge. <clears throat> what would you say like the editor that you used? Is that somebody that you didn't know from the beginning and you've developed a relationship with? I didn't know her from a can of paint. You know, me personally, you know, I wanted um, an African-American to edit my work because I felt like uh, my work had a lot of uh, culture in it. And mm -hmm. so I just wanted to be relatable. I didn't want somebody to critique it off of their upbringing just not being able to relate to it. And so when I found her, you know, um, she had published 20 books herself. She had been an editor for over 20 years. And so I chose her, I went with her, and that was the best thing I did. You know, shout out Elaine Garcia, you know what I'm saying? She ever see this, yeah. you know, that woman, you know, she's, very, she, she's great at what she do. And the most important thing she taught me was show, don't tell. I can't preach that enough. Show your work, don't tell your work. Any way you can use to show it, show it. Mm. Don't say walk. Describe how they walk. Don't say talk. You know what I mean? Don't don't use sight words, man. Like use words to to draw it out so that picture's painted. <clears throat> Where else would you recommend people find an editor? Because me too, I didn't know my editor from anything. I had I actually went online again. This was ten years ago. Right. It's a lot easier. There's sites. There's platforms now that people can, you know what I mean, they, they, they will bid for your work. Like right. You can say, look, I want an editor for this. This is this is what my story looks like. Right. And people will literally bid, hey, I'll do it for X amount of dollars. Somebody else might bid, I'll do it for X amount of dollars. You can Google, you can use Fiverr. You know what I'm saying? You can use Fiverr, you can use Google. Or, you know, another thing, you could take some of some of the books that, that you like the most and see, you know, the editor should be documented somewhere in the credits. You know what I'm saying? You may use an editor from, like I say, a book that you enjoy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Whether that's in your price range or not, you know, that's to be determined. But typically, you know, uh, like a dollar twenty-five a page is typical. You know what I mean? And, you know, your story will shrink because a lot of things will be changed. Um, your story will shrink. Don't worry about the page count. The story's done when the story's done. I can't preach that enough. Yeah. And so, um, but the key is, is to stay locked in with a good editor. You don't want to jump around. Once you find one that you rock with, 
Keep them close. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, there's different forms of editing. And so like copy editing, also known as sentence level editing, you know, that's the most popular form. It's the, the grammar check, you know what I'm saying? Does it spell right? Did you use the word right? You know, is the word consistent throughout the book? You know, in whatever angle you're using it. And so an editor is going to charge you, you know, per page and also per form of editing also. And so some things just need copy editing, which is just like fine tuning it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, um, for example, a self-help book is not going to need uh, line editing. You, it's no... It's no um, there's no like uh, plot twist or gaps to fill. It's just strictly information. So copy editing would be what you would need to just make sure everything's spelt right. You know what I'm saying? The grammar is correct. Mm -hmm. And so that's copy. And like I say, line editing is more in detail. This sentence structure, the length of it, the style, um, you know, show not tell. Um, things of that nature. So if you're using, if you're writing a fictional book, you're gonna need copy editing and line editing. Um, if you're doing um, a self-help book, if you're doing a skill set book, you're just going to need copy editing. <clears throat> so you recommend the same editor will be able to provide all of these services or you might have to have different editors for different types of The same service. editor typically. Okay. Like um, crazy, like um, with this book, like because of some of the things in the book were too graphic for her it triggered something from her childhood and she passed it off to a colleague which mm. I thought was very interesting you know what I mean she was like it is so well writ written and so detailed that it, it triggered something that happened to her in her past mm. and she didn't want to touch it you know what I'm saying and so she passed it along so they have a network that they deal with like if she is overbooked, she'll say, hey, you know, Cal, I can't get you in now, but I got somebody who I vouch for who can. Oh. And so they typically have a network, but you, when you hire her, she has different prices for different services, so you can go to the same person. Oh. You know, proofreading, of course, is self-explanatory, which is typically the last step, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is, in their network, the one who edits is not going to be the one who proofread it. So if you're editing, editing his book and I'm editing his book, when they get to proofreading, we'll switch. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, you've edited so much, now you're engulfed in the story. You may have missed something, mm -hmm. and it's just human nature to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's good to know as well. But beyond all that, you cannot edit your own work. You cannot. Don't let nobody tell you you can. That is a recipe for disaster. That money is money well spent. You can't put a price on good editing. You try to go edit yourself, bro. Now, don't get me. You can do it. Yeah. But. Nah, don't. You're, don't. But don't. Don't do but it. But don't do it. Don't do it. Because the success rate is very, very slim. There are like. Um, like the lady who write all the Harry Potter books, she don't edit her own stuff. She got a series of work. She sure she edits for other people, but you cannot edit your own work. I thought about it when I I was like, yo, you know what I mean? I can do this. And I wrote the book. Like you feel me? I can I can critique it and correct it. I spent <clears> an extra month and a half on my first book than, than what I should have trying to edit the yeah. work. <laughs> I just wasted time. Time and money for sure. You know what I'm saying? Typesetting is another form that's important that we we overlook. Like um, just being able to get your book formatted where the margins are the same, your headers and your ledgers are, uh, excuse me, your headers and your footers um, are the same length. Like there's a science to that that like a Microsoft Word can't produce. And so all editors don't do that, but you do like typesetting is so your page is in with this at the same place. Your your numbers on your pages are aligned correctly. Um, you don't want numbers on the back side of pages, right? You only want numbers on the right side that face forward. And so things like that that um, only professionals would know. Mm -hmm. 
those are things that you need to know because it adds professionalism to your project. And in my opinion, it's priceless. And so uh, those are things to take in mind. And uh, like I said, I do have people in place and resources for you all. When you do get to that point, you'll be able to reach out and I'll be able to point you in the right direction. Uh, my publishing company, all I do is pen publishing. We do that type of work and we outsource what we can't do. And so for all you, everybody listening, you know, you're trying to write a book, we can help you get it from the brand to the bookshelf, you know what I'm saying? So everything from the idea to distribution, we help with. Dope. Well, I know they want to know how much it costs. How much it How costs. much do it cost? Man. How much it will cost? So it varies. It varies by page count. It varies by how much, you know, money we have to do. So like I said, you know, copy editing, if that's all we have to do, that's going to be a lot, you know, cheaper than if we had to line edit it. You know what I mean? Mm. So it all varies. And um, it, it's no cookie cutter price. And, you know, we do our best to remain fair, especially people whose circumstances we relate to. Yeah, yeah. But obviously we got a breakdown of a of a of an ideal budget or what you should be looking to spend. Ideal budget, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I just put some common expenses like editing can cost you anywhere from five hundred to fifteen hundred, depending on the page count. You know what I mean? Edit can be very expensive. Like for this book I probably pay like a thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying, to have it edited. You know what I'm saying? Typesetting can be another four fifty to a thousand. So everything really relies on uh, the page count. It definitely, it depends on how big your book is, but please don't let that be no determining factor on your story. Don't omit none of your story to try to fit into this range so it can be inexpensive as possible. There's ways around that, you know what I mean? And uh, I was gonna wait till this was over to holler at you about, but since we live, we might as well kick it off. Man, you know, uh, I'm gonna sponsor you know, three people, you know what I'm saying, here today, I'm going to sponsor, yeah. you know, through this process, man. You know, I'm going to sponsor. So, you know, to, sh to, to show you our appreciation for your commitment to overcoming your circumstances, we're going to sponsor a couple people through this process and get you on the bookshelf, man. So once your story come and your story ready, we're going to help out, man. That's dope. That's big. Yeah, That's for big. sure, That's man. Big. Because, as you see, it does cost, you know, it, there are some expenses to it. You know, the cool thing about it is the hard part, the hardest part don't cost too much nothing, nothing but time. You know what I mean? Your time. And that's the hardest, you know, that's the hardest part. If you have something that you can then take to somebody to edit it and design it and all of that. But there are some expenses that, that, that come with it. So uh, appreciate your, your willingness to, to do that, bro. That's, that's all big. good, that's man. Big. You know, anything I can do to help, man, and for the... Uh, and for the ones who, you know, have to come out of pocket if you're able to, the thing is this. Uh, printing and distribution is typically between 5 to $8 per unit, per book, right? But the thing is, if you spend it 8 and you're selling it for 20 that's a $12 profit. And so for you to get your investment, the return on your investment is tremendous mm -hmm. with a book. You know what I'm saying? you might be able to buy enough to get them for three to four dollars per book and if you sell it for 25 dollars, i mean you know the math on that mm. so don't be discouraged about the price that it's going to cost to get it up and running just think about if i have a good product i can get that back and some right away mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so it's very important and you might you know this is where we get into the financial education side of things absolutely this is how we show you where to go get the money how to put it together, right? So that you can have the finances you need to invest in yourself. Absolutely, you know and that's why the financial literacy that you bought the lesson with is so important because, you know, you establish an LLC, you go, you know, leverage your credit, get some funding, and now none of this came out your pocket. Now you can come see Cal with the bank money, and we gonna, we gonna, we gonna bust their money down the middle. You know, I don't gotta feel like I'm taking away from what you're trying to do, what you come once you come home. We're going to show you how to go get the, 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 the they OPM, bag, baby. OPM, baby, other people's money. You know what I'm saying? We live by that. So, yeah, man, we're going we gonna to get y'all into that, too. Um, publishing, you know, you got traditional pub publishing, you got self-publishing. Traditional publishing is you putting together some work and then pitching it and trying to get a book deal. Now, a book deal 
um, with any with anything it has its perks and it has its is, is negatives, you know what I'm saying? For example, right, when you get a book deal, you sign away your rights. You sign away your publishing. They have creative control over your cover, over your design, over where it's sold at, and they're going to typically give you an advance up front and a very small royalty on the back end. So they might say, okay, we'll give you 15000 today, and then every unit sold will give you a dollar will get typically is like 30 cent so just think about how many books you would have to sell to actually get some revenue whereas if you take the self-publishing route like i did you know it's like being in the entertainment business if you were an independent artist as a rapper you going direct to uh retail you you skipping over the middleman so i can pay for distribution and printing four dollars a book and sell mines for twenty five dollars a book, and this is <clears throat> and this is where that true hustler come out. That's when that true hustle, you know what man. Saying? Figure you, out what you really made of, you right? Know I mean? And you can translate your prior, wherever background you come from, into this. If you can sell one thing, you can sell anything, whether that's legitimate or not. If you can go sell in retail and sell shoes at a shoe store, why you can't sell your own book? You use those same tactics and that same logic to pushing your book. Mm. And so absolutely, um, I encourage self-publishing because it's easier to establish the guideline of wealth because now we can LLC it. Now we can go get funding for it. Now we can use tax breaks to, to resonate with it. And you can sell less books and make way more money, you know, and all the other doors that open up. You know, they might have clauses in your contract with traditional public publishing that you can't do certain engagements about the book mm. unless they line it up. <clears throat> and it's just a lot easier, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's even more easier. I mean, I self-published 10 years ago. One of my main reasons is because, uh, first of all, I just like to own my own. You right. know what I mean? I like to do things on my own. I like to figure it out. The other reason is nine times out of 10, people ain't trying to mess with you unless you got some history, unless you got some experience, unless right. you got some books under your belt. Right. You know what I mean? So they like, yo, we ain't about to give you nothing. You ain't never wrote a book before. I don't really know who you are. Right. So th this day and age is, you know, the information is out there. Things are more accessible. It's easier for you to self-publish. I created my own publishing company. You know what I mean? And just published my own book, right? And it's not, it's not that difficult to do. Um, and so I would recommend self-publishing as well, unless you, you know, unless you got a, you know, big name, dope story, um, and you got some connections, then that might be the way to go. But for me and how we get down, self-publish. Self-publish, man, 